How are you doing now, Ernie? Are you feeling better? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, is I'll be out of the, I'll be retired now for from policing for it'll be my tenth year in November. Incredible. So and it just went by so fast. I mean, uh, the first there was the the nonfiction books, then the public speaking, then COVID came. Uh, then I started with uh, this uh, with ISN Mascot, the company I work with now, and so it's just been a, a blur. But the the book was written uh, in that in that t- the time between the. COVID in the end, public speaking. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it just was awesome. <laughs> it was fun to write. <laughs> you know, and that, like I said, I, I referred to that earlier when we were talking that, that I'm not one of these guys that struggles over every word. You yeah. know, I mean? like when I, when I started writing that, I, I was handwriting it uh, on the train. And then I had that first chapter done as we were getting to Oban. We were going through a, a couple of places in Northern Ontario that I based. Uh, uh, the Lackville on and, and Georgetown, uh, the principal look, and of course Thunder Bay, which was actually was uh, Thunder Bay used to be Fort William and uh, uh, Fort Arthur. Fort Arthur it used to be two cities, and they amalgamated in the '60s. So I kind of used that as the uh, my hub, I guess you want to have it my hub. But it, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> uh, <coughs> there was no other place but Northern Ontario to set that book though, because. So many of the the characters in the book were people I knew or based on people I knew. Yeah. Like. Um, and you know what, Ernie? This is the perfect time. Why don't you tell us what your book is about? All right. So, uh, Pine yeah. Box and Three Hundred Three Hundred Three is a novel set in, uh, in North Northern Ontario. Uh, yeah. It starts immediately after the war, and it's two veterans that uh, um, served in the same regiment, which was based out of Thunder Bay or back then as Fort William, Port Arthur. And uh, they grew up three miles apart, uh, uh, the, the town and the First Nation, uh, and they didn't know each other until the war. And then during the war, they they bonded, as soldiers often do. And uh, when, they, when they're on their way back to, to Northern Ontario, they decide to start a business, yeah. which back then was pretty much unheard of. And then uh, the journey takes... Uh, uh, the story takes takes you from there, from the start of their business to uh, through several tragedies and uh, and basically involves the story of the two families and and uh, their their struggles uh, against and there's some uh, pine bugs in there, some very uh, nefarious characters that uh, are constantly trying to to uh, to thwart the efforts of these two families to to be happy and successful. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in there. It's uh, it was uh, like I said, it was really fun to write it because I just like all these people from my lifetime when I was young, uh, the German prisoners of war, the uh, the Finnish people, because they were all part of that that uh, culture in Northern Ontario. I grew up around them, right? Yeah. My my um, grandmother married a German prisoner of war. Who who remained in Canada after the war, and he still had a heavy accent years later. And, uh, he's passed now, but uh, but yeah, the book is is basically it's a it's about a struggle for justice. It's about two family stories. Uh, there's um, uh, a lot of unexpected twists if, uh, for the reader. It's uh, I, when I was writing it because I really didn't have the plot thought through from beginning to end. I just wrote it chapter by chapter, and then they'd sit there and go, "Oh yeah, this I can make this happen," <laughs> or you know, yeah, or I could do that. So that was, that was the funnest part of writing the book. And uh, when I was first, when I first let one of my friends read it, <clears throat> the raw manuscript, he texted me at midnight saying, "You, you killed this person." And I was like, "Yeah, I did." <laughs> you know, it was, but yeah, it was just uh, it was a fun story to write, and it, I think it's. Uh, uh, it'll take readers uh, to places they'd never thought of before, yeah. and uh, and it's from a different perspective. I mean, uh, uh, I I could bring the perspective of, of the military. I could bring the police perspective. I can bring uh, pollution and how it affects people. Uh, there's all kinds of twists, and then uh, my experience with the courts, which uh, I incorporated into the the, la- the last part of the book, so at a trial. So, but yeah, so many more, so many things are based. Basically, you know, things I experienced, witnessed, or or felt. And you know, that's what that's one of the things when I was was reading it. Like I, 
Well, first of all, I, I loved your book. Like I, it was like, I was just like whipping through it. Like I read through it so quickly and I really, really love this incredible bond between Almer and Gilbert. Like it, it just, I mean, it just touched my heart. Can you, you, you mentioned it, but can you dive a little deeper into why these two gentlemen have such a great bond? Well, it's, uh, like I said, based on experience, I'm still friends with guys I went through yeah. uh, basic training in battle school with and got my leaders course uh, years later. Yeah. That bond, the bond has never gone. Uh, and I, I can't, I can't imagine how much more had been, it would have been heightened in combat. Mm -hmm. Right. And because that you're literally depending on that person every day, it's just, it's almost the same with policing. It's like some of the partners I had when I was policing, uh, one I worked with for six years, one I worked with for five years. Uh, we knew each other's every, everything. We knew everything because we were 12 hour shifts together in a car. And it was the same with the military. Like I said, I went through uh, like a battle school, uh, still friends uh, all these years later, right? Yeah. It's in, and like I said, in war, I'm sure that bond would have been even tighter. And you know, yeah. yeah so that that that's what I used to 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 develop Gil, Gilbert Gilbert and Elmer's characters and and to show that bond. And what was so incredible because you've got a Cree man and a white man who've come from the war. They're going to their community and things don't go quite so smoothly for them when they return home with, they've got this incredible bond, they're friends. But so can you tell us about the role unconscious bias plays in your novel? Hmm. <laughs> I never thought about that actually, to tell you the truth. Because uh, th th there are, there are going to be biases when, when you're writing, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like I've never been a big fan of businessmen especially dirty businessmen. Like I, I like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like successful uh, uh, entrepreneurs who are, uh, uh, who are generous with, with their success, but there's, there's uh, other business people that are just not, <laughs> and they're just, yeah. they're awful people actually. And so uh, th that bias came out in the, in my, one of my main villains, obviously, mm -hmm. because he, he's unscrupulous and uh, he has no, no, he has no compunction about uh, trampling over uh, pe people and people's rights or putting them in the poorhouse or whatever the case is. So, uh, so that that's probably one of my unconscious biases. I like, like I said, I love successful entrepreneurs, but I'm not much for the for the ruthless businessman. Yeah. And uh, and that's who that character character is based on an amalgamation of all the ruthless businessmen I knew over the years. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And I think of too, like the relationship that Elmer and Gilbert had, like each of their communities weren't happy about a Cree man and a white man being friends, like not everyone, but that was, there was a lot of judgment that went on in each of the communities. You know what? It still goes on today. It yeah. still goes on today. When I was working in the evacuations, there was uh, some uh, people in the host communities that uh, wanted nothing to do with uh, first nations people and there's first nations people that wanted nothing to do with the host communities and and when and when when they were working together it uh it really irked uh people like why are you working with those people why are you working with you know what i mean and so so uh yeah it's still to this day it still goes on it's uh you, you get called on it a bit faster now but back when i was a kid like uh nobody wanted to hang out with the the first nations guys or like when i was going to high school because yeah they didn't right so I, but there was always somebody that uh that befriended you like in in a small town and like i said remember about working your way through things i just keep working my way through things and eventually just to be seen as a as a person that's that's what you want your ultimate goal was just to be seen as a person not not a native person not a french person whatever the case just people right exactly <laughs> exactly and that's you know on your cover you've got um and i mean this is certainly the undercurrent um demonstrates what your book demonstrates what is possible when people unite and fight for justice and it, it really is incredible. And I, I kept thinking, you know, you with such a long career, military, uh, police force, I mean, you see a lot of violence 
and yet you still have this incredible belief in injustice and what is good. Um, how how are you able to maintain that, Ernie, with everything that you've seen over the years? You know that's that's a that's a good question. Uh, I love people. Basically, I love people. Yeah. Right. Even even when it, when I like. There's a very few truly, truly evil people, right? Uh, like the, you know, the Bernardos of the world. I mean, uh, but they're very few. And and even, uh, I, I hate to say bad guys, but even some of the criminals I dealt with, I, I always liked them. They were, you know what I mean? Like, unless they were super violent. And, but uh, they were characters. Right? Everybody had a character. There's always characters. And, and I just love people in general. I just, uh, you know, it. Uh, at some, you know, there's a principle of reciprocity, right? And and you, if you're kind to somebody, or you smile, you know, or you're you're not confrontational, uh, they have to do it back at some point, right? They have to do it back. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a it's a law of, law of nature, reciprocity, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a long time to break people down, but you can break them down too as well. So it's, where they actually think, yeah, maybe I am being a jerk and maybe I should stop being a jerk. <laughs> you yeah. Know, or, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, you get just a love of people. That's uh, for all the things I've seen. Uh, there's way more good people than there's bad. And, and that's, uh, that's my, that's my baseline. Thank goodness. Right. Thank goodness. Yes. Yeah. And you've got some incredible women in your novel. I mean, Mary Francis, the wives of, um, Gilbert and uh, Elmer are just fabulous. Um, were these characters based on anyone you know? They're kind of an amalgamation of as well, uh, yeah, yeah, of my mom and my uh, my aunts, my wife. Uh, just I, I've I've been blessed uh, my uh, my whole life to be surrounded by strong strong women, right? And uh, so yeah, just kind of amalgamated all the characters and. Uh, yeah, into those two characters and uh, and 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 the Helen, the little sister, and and to Eva yes, too Helen. as well. Yeah, yeah, Helen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're, I mean, you, you're. They were strong women and also patient. I thought. Strong, yeah, you have to patient and smart too. Like I, I thought. The, yeah, I really, I, I really, I really enjoyed your book, Ernie. I really enjoyed it a lot. And I'm going to hold it up again <laughs> so everyone can see. <laughs> Pine Bugs in 303s. It's by Ernie Lewitt, published by Latitude 46. And I will put links down below in the description box so you can purchase a copy of this fantastic book. Miigwech, Ernie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Miigwech. No, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye.